Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI Show. Welcome to another fabulous Monday. Mm. If anyone's got the case of the Mondays, it's me. Yes, it's true. I'm excited to be here. We've got a fun show lined up for you. We're going to be talking about accessibility with Ailsa. She's fantastic. Uh, It's going to be a good discussion, I hope, at least from her end. After that, we're going to be going into Rochambeau mode. You know, I feel like I just don't have enough time to get stuff done. So I may like throw in a sporadic Friday Twitch stream where I work on the stuff because I'm not making progress and it's making me frustrated. It's like this must be like a government job thing where it's taking me a year or two to build one thing. East no bueno. So we'll make sure to do that. Also, hello. Where's everybody coming from uh, this time? I'm glad to see every one of you here with us today. We, we have a new time, Monday at 8.30 in the morning, to hopefully reach more folks that may be on the East Coast of the United States or in Europe, because in Europe it's 8. It's only 4.30, end of the day, you know, in London and France. Um, so where's everybody coming from? Uh, I'm in I'm in Redmond, Washington. Well, I'm next to Redmond, Washington. So uh, put it in the chat. Also, we love interaction. So if you have questions or comments, complaints, complaints are for Ailsa. So she'll be on in a second if you have complaints. Um, all right. So let's talk about what we're doing today. Let's talk about what we're doing while you're telling us where you're coming from. Howdy doodle. I've got my handy dandy Waka 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 tablet. Man, that sounded like that sounded like something like new Waka 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 tablet. Number one today accessibility with Ailsa. Um, of course. Number two. Number two. Uh, project work. Hopefully we'll make some progress here because I feel like I'm not making progress. All right. So let's see where people are coming from. Uh, we have Ooh. Ohio. Oh, Ohio. I love that little filter that I have. It makes it sound like like super important. What's up? What's up is a glorious name. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah, there you go. Egypt. Oh my goodness. If there is ever a place I've wanted to go to, it's Egypt. Just the everything. Everything. Egypt. In fact, sometimes I think I've already been there, but I haven't really been in Egypt. I've just been in denial. Denial. Not Egypt, but these are the jokes, people. Okay. We also have Vancouver, British Columbia. Vancouver. Oh, that's that's Ailsa. Oh, that's our guest. She's sorry. I'm giving away stuff. I don't know how to read Japanese, but I've been to Japan. Oh, what a wonderful place! Even like the back alleys are immaculately spotless. Like I think I saw, I think I saw like rodents like cleaning up after themselves. It was amazing cleanest place I've ever been to. Lagos, Nigeria. Welcome. I've never been to Nigeria, but I, I know a lot of friends. I have a lot of friends that are uh, from Nigeria. Wonderful folks. Nicest people I have ever met in my life. Alpharetta, Georgia. Welcome. That's near Atlanta, if I am not mistaken. Welcome. I keep covering my face up. Maybe maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a good thing. India. Welcome, my friend. And um, to everyone else, Brazil. Brazil. 
Hello, my friend. Uh, welcome. Uh, I'm glad everyone's here. Uh, we have a fun show for you today. And like I said, uh, if you have any questions, comments, complaints, feel free to put them in the chat and I will respond to them immediately. Well, I mean, not immediately, immediately. Im not immediately, you know, just like maybe somewhere in the middle. All right, without further ado, let's see. Uh, Ailsa, are you ready? Boom, thumbs up. How you doing, Elsa? Good. Yeah, I'm in I'm in a good mood this morning. I love the chirpy starting off music and I've left the house already, so it's a pretty oh, good. Oh, it can only go downhill from here, Elsa. So just you've been warned. All right. Thank you for I'm the warning. So just, far so good. Okay, cool. And you're you're just north of me, a couple hundred yeah. miles, right? Yeah, Vancouver, BC. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. Okay. So, um we do this is like the fun part. We do a serious part because I'm going to cut the, the the show thing we do out and then we'll put that as official. And so this is the beforehand. Um, so this is what we're going to do, if that's okay. Uh, once it's we get out of the chirpy, exciting part, I'm going to bring this doc up to make sure I know what I'm talking about. Um, I'll just say, hey, welcome to the AI show kind of thing. And then I'll play, I'll play the bumper. We have a bumper here. Let me show you. Hold on. That's the bumper. Ooh, that's fun. Even I know. I'll play, the, I'll play the bumper, and then and then we'll get to it. Okay. All right. All right. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Uh, let me get this thing up, and let me move my buttons because I have buttons for this stuff. And I, I feel like I haven't done this in forever, Ailsa. I've never done this. And you're you, already doing. You make it great. Doing. You make it. You make it so easy. You make and now you're doing, you're doing better than me, Elsa. We, maybe oh, you well, should host a show one week. Please no. Please no. Oh really? This isn't. <laughs> no, you're like no, no. We need clown people, Seth. That's yeah. what we do. All right, all right. Let me get my buttons ready. Uh, and okay, you ready? Yes. Serious. This is all right. Now time's time to pay the bills. Time to pay the bills. Here we go. All right. Let's see if anyone said anything funny in the chat because I. Every once in a while, I like to look over. Seth. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hold on. I got to do the intro. Janusku, seven. Seth, no, the AI thing. Seth, the AI, no things. Yes. That should be the official name of the show, but it's not. All right. Here we go. You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI show. Where we're talking all about. Oh, my buttons aren't working because I didn't push the other. Okay, here we go. You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI show. We're talking all about. My buttons aren't working, Elsa. I, I don't have a button. I have buttons, but there, there it is. Mm. Okay, there it is. My buttons weren't working. S -s oh, I got a, I got a command from the chat. Hold on, here we go. <laughs> say my name. I'm going to say it in a scary, deep voice for you. That's like Ghostbuster quality. But you ever watch Ghostbusters, Elsa? No. What? <laughs> Sorry, I just I just have it. All right, let's stop. We're stopping the show. Right it's all over. It's no, I'm just. <laughs> it's a. It's a I'm here to talk about accessibility, not learning about Ghostbusters. I know. I know. Please. <laughs> I'll look it up after. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI show. We're talking. Oh, you can't laugh during the thing. <laughs> oh man, no, what's up? She is going to watch Ghostbusters afterwards. Promise. <laughs> I'll clear my schedule. Please, she, please let me stay. No more work for the rest of the day until we watch Ghostbusters one and two. No, my buttons aren't working. Well, there's two. There's no. There's three. And then there's a all, right, all female cool. version. So oh, there, you have that. a lot to do. You have a lot yeah. to do. Let's just be honest. All right. All right. You ready? Okay. Yes. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I gotta get the right button. I gotta get the right button. That's it. Okay. You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI show. We're talking all about using AI to make experiences accessible and inclusive with Elsa Lean. Make sure you tune in. Okay. I was supposed to. I was supposed to do this thing, but I didn't do it fast enough. Hello, 
and welcome to this episode of the AI Show. Where we're talking all about using AI to make experiences accessible and inclusive with Ailsa Lean. Ailsa, how are you doing, my friend? Hi, yeah, I'm doing great, Seth. Thanks for having me. Of course. So for those that don't know you, tell us who you are and what you do. Um, sure. So I am a design program manager. I work on the Azure AI team. And my job's completely focused on accessibility and inclusive design. I love it. I feel so grateful. Um, basically, I work with our teams that build the products, so designers, program managers, engineers, and I make sure that everything we build is accessible so that people with disabilities can use it. So developers, data scientists with disabilities, they can build AI too. Um, and That's I amazing. do things like this, where I talk about how AI can be used for accessibility, which is also very fun. That's amazing. So for those that don't know, because I we hear the term yeah. accessibility, and for some reason, in my head at least, it's like, wheelchair, but that that's, can't be the extent of, like that sounds very shallow and naive on my part. Can you help educate us a little bit? Yeah, yeah, but good, great for asking questions. It's always good to ask, right? So basically accessibility is just making sure that everyone can access things. Um, so we normally talk about people with disabilities because they have many barriers to access, but it's really like, does everyone have equal access to education, um, to jobs? Uh, and mostly in my work, it's does everyone have equal access to technology, right? And that's so important when you think about like how per pervasive technology is right now, right? Like if I can't use WhatsApp or, you know, uh, watch this live stream or, you know, check my email. So uh, my work's related to the technology part, but accessibility is totally making sure people with wheelchairs can get into buildings as well. That's amazing. So you brought some slides. I, I think you're going to take us through them. Let me let me pop them up. I'm the slide guy today. So tell us a little bit about about this. Yeah, so basically it's the idea that um, there used to be this thing called the medical model of disability, which is the idea that disability is a is a personal health condition, right? And it's kind of a like a deficit, right? But now um, most people, and definitely at Microsoft, the way we look at it is disability isn't a personal health issue, but it's you are disabled by society or by systems and how they're designed, and you're disabled because, for example, the building only has steps and doesn't have a ramp. It's not because there's a problem with you, but it's because there's a problem with the way the system has been designed to exclude you. So the idea is disability is about a mismatch between what you're trying to do um, and what you're able to do, like basically due to a design of a system or a technology or something like that. Um, I and I think so, that's really powerful. So let me, because I, yeah, yeah ask this, questions. but I have, so uh, let's just say for me, for example, uh, there's, there's things that I have, like, for example, I wrecked my bike the other day and I hurt my knee. And so it's all skin and I'm walking around all hobbly. And it turns out that I was doing something this morning and the on-ramp was super helpful to me. Yes. At that moment in time, because it was, it, it felt like I almost had like a temporary or a transitory yeah. issue that caused some access. Does that, is that included in this? Yeah, that's perfect. Lead me on to my next slide, Seth. Oh my goodness. Look at this. It's like, we know what we're doing. Let's yeah. do it. So yeah, if you think about mismatches, definitely people with disabilities aren't the only people that, that experience them, right? So you can kind of think about disability as a spectrum. So like these are, this is something we came up with at, at Microsoft, like the spectrum between permanent, temporary and situational disability, right? So taking your wheelchair example, um, if someone's in a wheelchair, they're permanently disabled. If they, uh, you know, slipped and, you know, had a skiing accident, I guess is what this picture refers to and, and have a broken leg or have to use crutches for a bit, that's a temporary disability. And then, and that's you, I think, if you hurt your knee. Um, and then situational is like, um, you can't access the steps, not really for a temporary disability purpose, but purely situational in that moment. So that can be like, I'm wheeling a push chair or uh, I'm wheeling a bicycle. That happens to me a lot. So, yeah. And this and is cool. Because I'm, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Cool. Go ahead. No, what, what was cool? Tell me what was cool. So what's cool about this is it makes me think about it differently because accessibility for some reason, and, and again, this is all naive to me. I, I'm all, pretend I'm the naive version of me. Disability was like, or accessibility was like someone in a wheelchair needs to get up the steps. But you're saying that accessibility is about really everyone having yes, good access exactly. to whatever software it is. And so this really, everyone wants accessibility. Yeah, and, and you can think about like, um, for example, sight as as a spectrum, right? Like, especially like, like you know, you, I think I think you have pretty poor vision, Seth. If you don't mind yes. me pointing it out, yes. you've mentioned that, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, someone can be blind or or um, very low vision, and they require a screen reader to be able to use websites, right? Or um, there's a huge spectrum. Like, I've got contact lenses in right now, right? That's an assistive technology. Without them, like, I wouldn't really be able to see you very well or this slide. Um, mm. And I think you're you're the same, right? So it's a spectrum. No, we're not and the same. 
Like my my yeah. eyes are so bad that you know how you're like, you, let's go to the glasses place and they'll make you glasses an hour. No, my glasses take months because they got to hire some hobbits to forge the lens of power in the fires of Mount Doom. That's how blind I am. Like if I had my glasses on, I would start a fire kind of thing. And so that that's an example of a more permanent disability that I have that I use yeah. corrections yeah. to make everything else more accessible. Am I getting the vocabulary right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, basically, if we think about accessibility, it really applies to everyone. I think that's kind of what we're talking about. Um, one thing we didn't mention at the beginning is even like we're talking about the permanent disability part, that's a lot of people, right? Like one billion people worldwide have a disability is the estimate. It's one in five in the US. Um, a lot of them uh, can be hidden disabilities as well. So like, we're talking a lot about like wheelchair usage or people who are blind or have very, very poor vision. Um, also, we have uh, invisible disabilities such as neurodivergence, right? So you can be dyslexic um, or neurodivergent in another way, ADHD, autism, these all count as well. And a lot of them are undercounted. We have that, that's the permanent category. Then once we go into temporary and situational, it's basically everyone. Everyone's experienced some form of temporary disability in their life and countless times many situational. Okay, so can you give us an example of just a mundane accessibility thing so people can get there? Because I think when we think about it from a mundane perspective and then move it on to software, hopefully that there'll be a good transition. Do you have something to yeah, show us? Yeah, there? yeah, show us the next slide. We, we were kind of talking about this. This is one of my favorite ones. I use these all the time. Do you know what these are, Seth? Yeah, those are like the curb, like so you don't have to like jump over the curb to get onto the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, these are curb cuts. I use them all the time because I'm, I'm often wheeling my bike around or, you know, people with push chairs, it's the same thing. Especially right now, it's really snowy in Vancouver. I don't know about Redmond, but these make it easier to get, get down and, and through the ice and the slush for sure. And so th these things are literally for everyone because... I mean, I'm, maybe I'm pushing a card or something or my, like, like you said, this is not just yeah, for really people in wheelchairs or for people that have crutches, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. So I think, I think now is a good time to like transition into, because we've been talking about general accessibility. Uh, let's move it now because this is the AI show. What yes. does this have to do with software and AI? Yeah. Well, if you think about, I can't remember what slide I have, but you can just put it up and we'll, we'll talk. Okay. Um, Oh yeah, so we were talking about mismatches, right? And it's like a yep. mismatch between a person and the system they're using. And if you think about our Azure AI tools, Seth, like look mm -hmm. at the middle line, right? Vision, speech, language, decision. Um, these are like basically human capabilities that you can add into a software and they can directly address mismatches, right? So, mm -hmm. and you can go to the next slide now. Um, there. Yeah, there so if I'm if I'm someone who's blind, right, the ability to recognize images and describe them to me, that's like a cognitive service, just wrap that right in and that makes images way more accessible. Same for speech recognition. If I um, have a mobility a disability and um, maybe I can't use the keyboard very efficiently, very efficiently, but I want to talk to my computer and, and lots of people find it easier to talk to their devices anyway, right? Like people use Siri all the time. That's another mm -hmm. example of makes things like it's very important for someone with a disability, but it's also incredibly useful for us, right? Being able to talk to Siri means you don't have to use your hands as much. And then natural language interaction, everyone loves talking to their computers. We're all about that at the moment, aren't we? Yeah. And so you're saying, if I'm understanding correctly, that AI could be like my contact lens for my yes. eyeballs. Yes. Yes. Interesting. And so there's some accessibility thing. Like, for example, I, if I have software where I require someone to type something in, I could just as easily add a button for people to push a button and talk into my text box. And now yeah. it's a lot easier for people to put information into a text box, for example. Yeah, especially with cognitive services. You just call an API and the AI does all the work for you. You have to build I your own see. model. Well, let me go back to this. Let me go back to the slide before because I think, I think, um, okay. So we have things that do vision, speech, language decision, obviously open AI service. Are there examples of accessibility things that folks have done with some of these services that you'd like to call out? Yeah, there's loads of stuff. We have a slide on that too, Seth. I'm super oh, prepared yeah. with my, my little Goodness. slide briefcase. Although I have one thing before beforehand okay. and I know you wanted to go in an order. So we okay. talked about like addressing mismatches and that's like converting, right? So like I can convert speech to text or text to speech and that can address a barrier. The other way that AI can help is efficiency because it's helping all of us. And that's where open AI comes in or many things like that. And the reason I included a picture of Stephen Hawking is because um, 
he basically controlled his keyboard with a muscle in his cheek, right? He had like a little switch that would be uh, affected by a muscle in his cheek. So he would have to type out. It took him a really long time to type things out. And, you know, the guy had a lot of smart stuff to say. Um, and he used predictive text, AI driven, actually swift key predictive text um, to make sure that, you know, so that he could type a little bit and then the predictive AI would help him get there quicker to save lots of cheek muscle movements. Um, and predictive text is great for all of us just to like kind of harp on that message again. So it's yeah. kind of like addressing mismatches and then also efficiency, which we all love. I see. So just to summarize, it, it's like there's the context lens situation with accessibility and AI that helps adapt my current capability with the needed capability in the software. And then there's the other one uh, for accessibility that helps people just be more efficient because there's a huge impedance mismatch between humans and computers. Obviously, if you're yeah. a programmer, you have one way of solving. But if you're not a programmer, maybe these things, assistive technologies can help you be more efficient. Am I getting this yeah. right? Yeah, and even they can help developers be more efficient too. I mean, we've seen GitHub Copilot, right? Mm, I see. So when we're looking at AI to help with accessibility, we can think of things to adapt regular human modalities or different human modalities into the computer, as well as helping humans just generally be more efficient. Yeah, yeah. Those are the two things I have in my mind as well. Yeah. Okay, that, that's cool. And so now the use examples. cases, right? Yeah. All right, let's go to that slide. Um, yeah, so these are these are just some of them, but these are the ones that, you know, we have loads of examples of people using them. You can see loads of logos on this slide. Um, like in our company, we use uh, uh, we use speech to text for live captions everywhere, right? So in Teams, in Windows, uh, in, in Stream, but also lots of external customers using it too. Um, and those benefit, I mean, everyone. I, I think almost everybody uses captions at some point in their week, um, but they're very important for the deaf and hard of hearing to know what's going on. And they're pretty helpful if you're neurodivergent, and, and they're also really helpful if you forgot your headphones and you're on the bus, right? Um, content reading, that's like, oh, do you want to say anything, Seth? You popped up. Yeah, again. I, I will yeah. say that, um, like, even when I'm watching my Netflix shows, yeah. I, I, we all, like, my kids started putting the captions on. And now I, I don't watch the shows without it almost at all. And the, yeah. the amount of comprehension that I'm getting is like double now. Like now, like, right. oh, that's what they really said. Because I watch a movie afterwards. I'm like, oh, that's what they said. You know how we're always like singing the song wrong. And then we look at the lyrics. We're like, oh, I've, yeah, yeah. I've been singing well, that so, wrong. So in, in the Lean family household, when I was growing up, we were all big TV talkers. We talk over the TV all the time. So we always had the captions on because otherwise no one knew what was going on because we were always interrupting it. Hmm. So there you go. So yeah. that, that's an example of adapting a human modality so that we could comprehend better, maybe even be more efficient as well. But, yeah. All right. What were and the then, other yeah, ones? There's loads of others. So content reading is like um, we there's a feature called Read Aloud in Edge or, or in Outlook and in Word, but that's uh, reading things out loud. So um, we're also actually that's a good teaser for next week. But um, for the second part of the accessibility two part special, we have we have a use case for content reading and, and turning uh, written text into audiobooks, which helps with accessibility for people with vision disabilities. Yeah. And I, I have found that, like, even when I'm just driving in my car, the modality, my my access to being able to read something now is zero. I can't read stuff while I'm driving. It's against the law. Number yeah, one. yeah no, you definitely hey. shouldn't. Please don't. Yeah. But now that there's this, there's audiobooks, I go through so many books listening to them. And I used to think, oh, that's not reading a book. And I'm like, no, it is. That's, that's reading true. a book. It's just I'm learning, I'm using a different, it, there's an adaptation for my current driving disability, which is I cannot use my eyeballs to read. Yeah, we have an Outlook feature called Play My Emails. Um, and it was originally designed with blind people to make sure it worked great for them to listen to their emails. Um, but now, like the marketing that we had for it was you could drive your car and listen to your emails on the way into work. So Yeah, I saw that too. So, all right, yeah. any any final things that you want to add? Uh, and, and then maybe we tease up what we're doing next time. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're all really cool. Nothing nothing more to add, like just, just to read out what's there. Translation, that's accessibility for people who don't speak uh, the, the language in the, that's being used. Voice control, we all love that, right? You get it. We, we all love all of these tools, right? Describing images is a cool one. So that's computer vision is getting really, really good now. That's all I have to say about it. And yeah, the ability to describe images is pretty great. The coolest thing. And I'm realizing the I pictures do. on this slide are, are not matching the thing. So I'll change that for next time. Oh, that's okay. I will tell you that the coolest demo that I do uh, just with standard AI, because my mantra is you can participate in AI just by using software, is when I turn on captions 
for PowerPoint. Like I, yeah. and, and this, look, let me do it. Um, let's do it right now. Let's, let's, let's do a demo of me doing it right now. So if I go like this and I use, always use subtitles, I could, I could even like, for example, I could even speak in Spanish and it comes out in English. What, let me show you. This is absolutely bananas. Miren, ahora estoy hablando español, pero lo que van a ver es van a ver algo en inglés. Oops. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Van a ver algo en inglés. Miren, estoy hablando en español, pero está saliendo todo en inglés. That's cool, right? It's very cool. And that's just a standard accessibility thing for people that don't speak English. Yeah. Which I think is really cool. And that's literally in in uh, in PowerPoint. You can see right here, you can, you have like a from and a to. It's absolutely bananas. If you've if you've ever go into PowerPoint and do this, it's it's really cool. And the thing about this is, I've given talks in foreign countries, and I felt terrible. I've always tried to learn like a word or two, but there is a there is there is a mismatch in comprehension that needs to be adapted. And AI can totally help with that. All right, so there's one more slide. I think tell us what we're looking at here. Yeah. So. Um hasn't oh there we go yeah so the thing i wanted to mention like you know talking about innovation is so cool bang these ai technologies into your apps and like you know have them convert these mismatches but something really important is this disability rights mantra called nothing about us without us um and that's about uh, you, you kind of get the idea but it's like don't design solutions that affect the disability community or really any community without consulting them right do your research ideally work with people in the community to design these solutions together and, and you know compensate them um but the, i have a picture here which is an example of um the sign language glove um which is a, an example and you know it's too much to go into now but um this isn't something that the deaf community in general is in favor of where anyone with like a real understanding of sign language would understand that you know, you use your face and um, it's, it's about movement. There's, it's a lot more than just the hands. And like, you know, it's, it's a really fun tech problem to solve if you're an engineer. Right. But like talk to the community, understand more about, you know, how, how they really communicate in this case. And, and yeah, it's it's very important to include the people that you're building a solution for. That's what I, I wanted to leave with, with saying that for sure. And, and that's super important because I. I worked with deaf people before and I started to learn a little bit of sign language and awesome. the amount of facial expression that's involved. If you did, if you've never seen it or if you've never participated and you're trying to make solutions, you might be mistaken in thinking that it's only the hand. Yeah. Oh, I just Which, saw my brother pops on the chat. Hi, Pierre. <laughs> hello. Uh, so any final, any final slides? Looks like you have a speech accessibility project. Tell us oh, about yeah. this. We can, we can, we can talk about that very quickly, but you know, that we talked about how cool the speech AI is. If it doesn't work for you, right, and it doesn't recognize your voice, then it's no good. And so we know that there's, you know, we have to make the AI inclusive as well, right? Like if you have a deaf voice, for example, you might speak differently if you've never heard voice. Um, or if you have a mobility impairment, you might um, have, you know, so we call it disarth dysarthric speech. You might have different speech patterns. We're working to make sure the AI is inclusive because otherwise everything we said earlier, like what's the use, right? We need to make sure we build the actual models inclusively. So, so we're working with, you can look up more about it, the Speech Accessibility Project. We're working with all the big tech companies to, to figure this one out. That is amazing. So any call to actions to finish up? Yes. Um, one last slide, I promise, then you can send me away, Seth. Last slide is check out the Ability Summit. This is such a cool event. It's a one-day virtual Microsoft event, all free, um, on March the 8th. Um, you can register at aka.ms slash ability. Um, and here there'll be all, you know, way more detail into these conversations. We'll talk about disability inclusion. Um, we're even talking about policy and things like that, but also a lot of tech stuff. So we'll be talking about AI for accessibility. And, you know, there's a, there's a, a breakout session on generative AI that will be kind of cool because we didn't even touch on that today. So. That's right. That's um, right. So definitely check out the Ability Summit. It's going to be awesome. Fantastic. And do you have a blog you can uh, send people to? Oh, I do have a blog. Yeah. So we have a, a link for that as well. So aka.ms slash Azure AI A11Y, because there's 11 letters between A and Y and accessibility. Uh -huh. um, that's, a, that's a tech thing. Um, yeah, read about the, the six use cases that we have for using Azure AI just straight out using an API for accessibility. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us, Elsa. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me, Seth. It's been awesome. And thanks for listening to everything I had to say. I had a lot I wanted to share with everyone. So yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for watching, my friends. We're learning all about using AI to make experiences accessible. 
and inclusive with Ailsa. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you Bye, next everyone. time. Take care. See ya. All righty, tiny. That was fantastic. All right, let's see. Let's see if we got any questions. All right, so let's get your questions out for Ailsa. I'll, I'll get them ready up here. Uh, there's been a lot of comments here. Uh, let's see. All right, so I saw some comments about, uh, yeah. Here, here's uh, here's Janice, number seven. Uh, good dude. He says, sometimes some special abilities like Superman can be overload instincts, so need to support. Yeah, so there... For example, sometimes in a situational case, I might be overloaded, and it's like, okay, I need to somehow filter things out. That's a that's a good one. Yeah, uh, I having, mean that's relevant. Um, uh, people with autism can can experience sensory overload, right? There's like lots of cool things you can do to kind of adjust, and and people generally have their own methods to self regulate too. Yeah, and having subtitles helps as well uh, for regulating. Yeah. Uh, here's another one. Uh, I love the uh, read my mail feature. Uh, that is, uh, the ML Wolfshire. I said it in the British way. Wolfshire. Wolfshire. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't tried it. I honestly, I, I don't drive as much except for seldom. Uh, and so I do it all at home, but yeah, reading my email while I'm driving, that would be fantastic. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, here's an important question here. Here, let me let me scroll down here. Uh, question one. Thank you. I don't know what to say about that one. Uh, and then finally, sorry, look, look, there's me squinting. I have a so if you don't know, I have a screen. Uh, let me turn up the music back on. I have a screen. I'm looking right at you right now because I have this really cool camera thing, and so I'm squinting to see what people are saying. All right. So, any final things that you want to share with us, Elsa? Before uh, we are you coming on next time, or is someone else? Uh, no, it's um, Mark. I, I can't remember exactly who, but it's it's the Project Gutenberg team on our side. So it's it's really exciting. I can tell you a bit about it. These um, two, Mark. Yeah, Mark. it's basically yeah. There we go. Mark, Mark, and Brendan. They're they're awesome. I feel bad for forgetting their names, but they mm -hmm. they worked with Project Gutenberg, which is a nonprofit organization. Um, and lots of people have heard of them. I think Seth, you were telling me you, you've you've read books on the Gutenberg site before. Yeah. Oh, right? I, I used to go, I for one of our conferences at Ignite. Ignite, I actually trained GPT two generative model to speak like Homer, not Simpsons, like Homer from the Iliad. And I pulled the books from Gutenberg project, and it read it and it like figured out how to like write like Homer. It was fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, Gutenberg's great because it's basically like a huge, huge collection of eBooks um, that don't have kind of like publishing rights on them anymore so they can be freely distributed. So like already Gutenberg's working on making books and literature accessible to a wider range of people. But with the audiobook project, they're making them accessible as audiobooks, which is amazing, right? Because audiobooks are, are easier for a lot of people to consume, right? If you have dyslexia right. or, or many other, you know, if you're low vision. Or you're driving. Um, yeah, or if you're driving, do, doing everything while you're driving, that's great. Yeah. Um, and then uh, they're also translating them. So they're making all these books available in different languages and all of that is going to be available free on the Gutenberg website. So they're going to talk, they're going to get into the tech stuff and talk about how they did that, right? Like they've got a giant number of eBooks. They have to, you know, figure out the voices, the expressions. There's so much stuff you can do with the AI, then translate it and, and you know, obviously quality checking at that scale. So like there's just a project with a lot of pieces that I think will be pretty cool when they go into it. Fantastic. Well, Elsa, it's been a pleasure talking to you, my friend. Thank you, Seth. Yeah, anytime. We'll see you next time. Well, she is delightful. I am so glad we got to talk about accessibility. Hopefully we're all a little bit more educated about it. Question two, when will I get the new Bing? I know, it's fantastic. Um, I don't know, I do I'm gonna go ask somebody? I, hold on, let me call somebody here. I'm calling the internet to see if they know about your... Hi, yes. Um... Do you know when Yasin um, is going to get the new Bing? Can you, can you help? Hello? Uh, he hello? 
I guess they don't know. Sorry, buddy. Uh, okay. All righty. So let's get to work. Uh, which one's the, which one's, let's get to work. All righty. We have been uh, neglecting our road chambo and we have a solid 24 minutes. I'm getting into work mode. Work mode. Work mode. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Boop. Let's get our, uh, let's get this going here. Uh, CD web. CD we will not work. CD web. Boop, boop. Boop. Um, yeah. I think we're using yarn. Let's see. Yarny. Yarn dev. Yarn dev. Here we go. I'll put this like this so that you'll see my face is, there we go, there we go. And then I'll move this over so there's more. Boom, there you go. Okay. Okay, so this is started. Let's get this opened. Um, uh, local, local host 3000. Oh, what did I do? The purge content options have changed in Tail Tailwind CSS v3.0. Update your configuration file to remove this warning. Okay, and I think we were on the train, train dealio. Uh, we want this one. Doot. Doot, 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 doot. Paper, 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 paper. And then I think what happened was if we. Okay, so this worked. It was when we pressed the space bar, I think, that it broke. Yeah. Okay. So that's the space bar is not adding stuff. So let's go over there and let's figure this out. And who would have thought? Who would have thought that um, AI problems need to be solved with React? I promise anytime we said React, React. We'd, we'd say it in a... It's almost like everything in the end is JavaScript. I know. I know. It's almost like I need to... I need to... I don't, I don't know. Breaking. Turns out that AI at the end is always just going to be JavaScript and a web page. News at 11. So let's see what we got going on here. And I got my, I got the chat here in front of me. So, um, spacebar not adding. Yes. So handle key. Handle key. Frame get frame. So this is working. Console log. Set length. Image current label. And so we should be able to see. Control shift I. Yeah, that's too much. I don't want to show all of it. Uh, let's Jason stringify. Uh, let's do let's do uh, dot length. That way we can see it. Because <sighs> I, I don't know why it's not doing what we want it to do. Okay. Boop. Boop. Remove. Boop. Okay. We're gonna do a none. Space. Space space okay so these are different pictures for sure you can see the image lengths are different but for some reason the state array is not getting set correctly so when i'm doing set images these are it's a uh, it's taking a training image array i'm using the spread operator to pull the images yeah so this works. So if this works, why, why the hee haw am I doing this? Let's do this, right? Why, what, what am I doing? That is just so stupid. Que paso?
Right? I mean, add image, get frame. Oh, surely, is this, by the way, is this, um, is this, uh, big enough? Frame length. Look at that co pilot helping a brother out. How about them apples? Well, they didn't help me here. Okay. All right, let's see if this works. Remove. Doop. Okay, space bar. That's weird. Right, because it's the same function we used before. Set images. When I use a button, uh... okay, where's add image call? Yeah, see, I'm literally calling this. Gosh, sometimes this stuff just makes me want to. So, it, yeah, so I'm, uh, Janiscu uh, is pointing out that it looks like it's updating the first frame. Uh, but it's not. But I'm like, so there's the images, right? It's, I'm using a set, a use state. So this is the state object. It's empty to start. When I call a set image, I'm using the spread operator to pull out what's currently in there and then add this one. Right? Because the, let's see, what is the training? Yeah, training image is a image and a, and a label. And that's what I'm doing. I'm pulling the frame, which is a string. And then the label, which is a string. Current label is set. Probably with the um, radio button. There you go. See? Yeah. There you go. And check. Yeah. Perfect. 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 So what's the dealio here? What's going on? Why is it unhappy with me? Why is it unhappy with me? Also, let's let's output the... Uh... Yeah, so there's the key and there's the label. I put that in there. Okay, so let's go back and let's see what's, what's going on here. So let's remove that. Looks like when I do a removal, I'm spitting out the whole image, which is dumb. Let's not do that. Let's not do it. Uh, there. Yeah, let's not remove the whole frame. Why would we do that? No, no, no. We'll do removing, um, removing, uh, key labeled, um, dollar sign. Yeah. There you go. Cool. Yeah, because when we splice it, it returns it returns the array containing the element that was deleted. Perfect. Okay. 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 Let's see what's going on here. Okay. So when I do capture, this works fine. Uh oh, something else is happening though. We want just the length, because the length will tell us more than what we want. Dot lengthy. Okay, cool. So notice, for some reason, when I clicky the button, 
Let's remove this, remove this. Boom. Capture, 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 capture. Yeah, it looks like it works. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's something wrong though. All right, let's refresh the page here. Hello, my friend, how are you? By the way, we're working on our Rochambeau project. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to start adding a, um, a way for people to add their own images. So when I capture, it says the current set length is zero, it, but yeah, that's because it's before you goober. Derf. What are you doing, my dude? That's just dumb. Okay. Now when I add it there, no, let's refresh. Okay. Why is it just the reactivity? Do I need to await this or something? Yeah, why is it? This is the handle key. Add image. This is so weird. Managing state in these things is such a bummer. Okay, let's try this. This is what's weird to me. I wonder if there's a way to look at state with React. Components, profiler. Footer, anonymous, device selector. My app. Where is the... Um, how do I find this thing? So this is my app. What's your deal, huh? Que paso? Oh, it's not in strict mode. Mm. Boo-hoo. Boo-hoo. So there's the device. Anonymous. Footer. Head. Theme. This has the forward ref that we had before. The device selector. The navigation. Where is the... Um, I wonder, how do you look at the state? Uh, okay. Callbacks. E profiler. Is it in the profiler? Okay. Finding contents of your state. Use a state. Do, 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 do. Uh, d dev tools. Okay, it's here. Train. There's the state. Perfect. So now we're. Now we're cooking with gas. There we go. So there is the state right there. Uh, there's an image and then there's a label. When I hit capture, it adds it. When I hit space bar, it clears everything. Do you see that? Hello, Hector. How you doing, my friend?
Oh, you're right. I missed uh, include IO stream using namespace standard. Yeah, almost, almost. Uh, so for some reason, when I do the button, it adds it. When I hit space, it clears it. Why? It's the same call. Let's log a keyboard event. Console e dot log e e beep boop. Let's see what's going on with this horrid event. Uh, space, 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 space. Yeah, it literally just. But why is it, um... yeah, this makes no sense. Ask the new Bing, is there any mistake? Maybe, I don't think Bing would know this because like I'm calling this add image. I'm using this spread operator. console.log So Hypersphere is saying something interesting. So it, it's saying, hey, this is how React works. It won't update the current variable. It will update in the next render cycle. That If that was true, and this is the add image, why is it that when I hit the button, it works? See, it's working. But when I hit the space bar, clears them. And it doesn't clear just one of them. It clears some of them. And then I change this and it clears it. It clears them. Like this is the weirdest, the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Oh, look at that. It's also not getting the fact that it's scissors. You see what I'm saying? Hypersphere? It's like, it's like, yeah, I could see what you're saying, but it it's working when I use the button. But not when I hit the space bar. Oh no, 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 yeah, that one, that one, that one makes sense. Um, if I were to put the image's length into a label, you would, in fact, let me, let me do that. So, so I can, it's cause you're, you're right, but yes. So for example, if under the, under the button, I'm like, um, let's do a span. Uh, current image count, uh, and then uh, images dot length. Like this would render correctly, <sighs> right? So notice it's it's perfect. Um, my my deal is when I hit the space bar, like it like cut the array in half, which is like what the let's let's do twelve let's do fourteen let's see if it does it to seven. No, it did it to four. Like what is this doing? Does it always just go back down to five? Yeah, in this case, it's always going down to five. What the freak? It went to four. <laughs> no, it's still at five. It's still down to four. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, I feel like this is one of the things that you just got to rewrite and be like, you know what? Forget y'all. Forget it. Forget it. I'm not doing it. I just wanted 
such a word at all. That's it. What? The remove works. Yeah, I mean, one, two, three. Space. What the heck? It made five. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, I want you to hear hear my internal my internal thoughts. Hold on, let me let me move this so you can see my internal thoughts. That's my my internal thinking. Some uh, so uh uh let's see here, uh weird set somewhere. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Control F, set images. Boop, boop. One, two, three. We know the remove works. These are the only three places I use set images. <laughs> Some odd const out of place. No idea. No, I. this is just making me grumpy. But it also seems that the label isn't captured with this face far. Is it this use effect that's getting loaded? I think this is, I think it's the use effect that is reinitializing something. Okay, let's see. Let's ask. Uh, add key event to next JS page. Oh, shoot. We are almost out of time. My goodness gracious. I got to do the walk off, the short version of the walk off music. Wow. We did. We moved to Monday. Surly Dev. We indeed moved to Monday. Mondays at 8.30 every week. AI show. Goodness coming to you. For those that want to watch the show. You still found me. Good. Good, 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 good. Well, this is a stumper. This is a stumper. I don't, maybe the key press should be added to the global div. Um, yeah, I think this is, Hypersphere, I think this is the right thing. Makes sense. Well, my friendly friends of all friends, it's been a pleasure being with you today. For the AI show. Um, I'm excited that you're here. I'm so glad you could spend some time with us. Uh, for the next show, we're doing more accessibility with Project Gutenberg. So make sure, make sure you tune in next Monday at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. 4.30 p.m. Universal time. Thank you for spending time with us. Uh, it's been a pleasure and a privilege being with you. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I put my Twitter handle right there. Thanks so much for watching. Next time, we'll see you on the AI Show Monday at 8.30. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Take care.